Hi everyone, it's Karen Redman, the Mayor of the Town of Gawler, and we're in the Institute building in the main street of Gawler, uh, and we're talking about the Recovering the Past exhibition, which is an internationally touring exhibition, uh, looking at, it, it, it really commemorates World War I, but it also commemorates the impact of war on more than just the soldiers, and but also the recovery efforts of um, all the debris and all the shells that are still there in, in some of these areas in Europe, uh, which is just quite extraordinary. And so this photographic exhibition uh, sort of juxtaposes, uh, which is a big word, uh, new and old in the same spot. It's quite a stunning exhibition. I have with me today uh, Jacinta Weiss, who's our cultural heritage officer here at the town of Paula. Hi, Jacinta. Hello, Karen. How are you? Very good, very good. Jacinta's an expert in this space and she knows all about uh, our exhibition. So we're just going to have a bit of a chat about this incredibly uh, powerful mm. uh, photographic exhibition um, done by Ian Alderman. So perhaps just walk us through what people will see when they come to the Institute. So when you um, first observe this exhibition, you'll notice that there are photographs of modern Belgium bomb dispute disposal unit personnel and they're in the fields of Flanders and they're recovering unexploded ammunition. They send out up to three trucks a day to collect unexploded ammunition and they have been doing that for 100 years. So that gives us some idea of the scope, of the danger and um, of the, the um, what, what that war, the Great War, did to that part of Europe. And as as um, contrasted, juxtaposed, as the Mayor said, um, in a photo montage are a collection of historical photos of Australian diggers. And you'll see some like that here. And when you see those photographs, you'll see that they're slightly translucent and faded out because that gives an, uh, an indication to us that they are historical figures. But I spoke to the artist in Alderman in London the other night and he was telling me it was very important for him to give these images a shadow so that we're reminded that they're not ghosts, they were real men. Mm -hmm. They are still there as real men, but they're, um, they're in layers across the current landscape. And I think that leads us to see that when um, life, stories, heritage, history, war has multiple layers, and it doesn't just stop when the bombs stopped and the guns stopped, the impact of that war is felt by these German, uh, Belgium bomb disposal units but also you'll find in the text panels stories from Australian women and children and returned soldiers and the impact of the war on them. And we often forget that. There are memorials all across Australia to, to the people who lost their lives and we honour those people and we're very grateful for their sacrifice. But I think we should always remember the cost and the sacrifice of the families and the loved ones who, weren't, who didn't go to war, but bore the brunt of war. Oh, yeah. yeah. We have a really large World War I uh, board down in our lower ground floor. In fact, it's a walk of honour. Many boards are there, ranging uh, from many different wars, uh, starting with, the, I think, the Boer War and going through to present day. Uh, there's, this war impacts everybody. And World War I, 60,000 men were killed. Over 160,000 were injured and maimed or gassed, uh, just in Australia. So it, 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 it was such a huge cost, mm. and that was just Australia. Right across the world, uh, it, it, uh, it impacted so many people. Uh, so I, I'm actually not surprised they're still pulling shells out because mm. of the volume of people that died. Mm. It, was, it would have just been extraordinarily uh, awful to go through. Uh, and I think back in... Uh, 1918 through to the 30s and 40s, and even to a lesser extent to the present day, people didn't deal with death. You didn't. The, the families didn't receive a body. You, there was no body. No. Often. No. Couldn't be found. No. Um, there's there's a the Menin Gate. There's a picture of the Menin Gate uh, over here as part of this exhibition uh, that the RSL donated to the town of Gawler, and uh, a Gawler local is on that gate. And they were never found, the bodies were no, never found. No, they were not. And I think that was Frank Scott. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Frank Scott, who worked here in our main street. Um, him and his brother, just an ordinary, ordinary people, 
going off to war, uh, but his body was never found. So, uh, you know, can you imagine, I can't imagine that, how you, how you even begin to grieve uh, a, a loved one that uh, you, you, you can't bury, you can't uh, acknowledge properly. No, yeah. yeah. And I don't think uh, death was uh, dealt with very well back then because we learn better strategies yes. as, we, as we go through history. And I'd like to think that we get, we're getting better at that. But back then, uh, you just didn't talk about it. And that didn't really work. Did it? <laughs> no, it did not. No, it did not. I think what we would now know as post-traumatic stress for returned soldiers and for their family members um, wasn't an identified um, condition. There wasn't the support that we, um, we look to give people now and hope, hopefully help them when they're dealing with those sorts of problems. And this exhibition reminds us of that, that these people did a really um, tough thing, often by themselves without the community support that, and care that we like to think is out there in this day and age. So the exhibition is on now. It's free. Yes. Uh, you can wander up uh, on the first floor, the Institute Hall, uh, come in and have a look. Uh, COVID rules apply, of course, so please be mindful of that. So just into just some further detail about the exhibition. So there is an opportunity for um, individuals to leave their thoughts and comments on the exhibition and they will be sent back to London as part of this international touring um, of the exhibition. They're collecting all of those. So there's an opportunity, I think, for you to make your little, little mark, your part of history on this exhibition. And um, having had a, a sneak peek through some of the comments so far, people are deeply moved by this exhibition. It's brought home to them memories of their distant family or friends, people they know who have served in any of the conflicts. I think we're all very grateful for those people who, um, who are willing to defend and serve. And also, and when you look around at the Belgian Bomb Disposal Unit, we all tend to know people who work in very dangerous occupations to keep us safe. So there's a lots of ways that when you come into this exhibition, I think you will put yourself in the picture. One of the things that you notice is that the historical images and the modern images are all looking in the one direction. And that they're looking at the sorts of things that we're looking at. So we can get to put ourselves in the viewer's position from out here, but we're looking at the same sorts of things that they're looking at in there. And that's a really important way for us to connect with this exhibition. Thank you, Jacinta, for coming along today. And please get along and see this really important um, international exhibition here at the Institute in the Civic Centre. Have a great day, everyone.